An Enzo El Nino pattern is expected to build as we approach the hurricane season months, where we do see that in the months of July, August, September, and even in October, the most likely scenario is that we will be in an Enzo El Nino pattern, and that will play a major role in terms of what type of hurricane season the Atlantic will experience, because typically during an Enzo El Nino pattern, we see less storms develop, less hurricanes, and less major hurricanes, but we need to take a look at several different other uh, factors, such as as the sea surf temperature anomalies as well as the amount of wind shear that's expected um, as we approach a hurricane season because those are two other factors that could play a, a major role as well when it comes to the amount of storms you should experience this hurricane season so just because we're going to be in the Enzo El Nino pattern does not automatically set in stone that there's going to be a below average hurricane season we're going to take a look at several different other factors to really determine what type of hurricane season the Atlantic will experience. We see that during an El Nino, the sea surf temperatures are much warmer than average right around the eastern equatorial Pacific, and that allows the air to rise a lot more and a lot more lift to go on right around the eastern Pacific, which means that since so much air is rising in this area, there needs to be an equal amount of sinking and stable air in another area, and that typically occurs in the Atlantic, where the winds move from a westerly to easterly direction, which creates a lot more wind shear because of course the trade winds right around the Caribbean move towards the, the west and the upper level winds in this scenario where the, there would be a lot more rising air in the equatorial Pacific would, for, um, would force the air in the upper levels to move to the east where there isn't as much lift and, and allows the air to sink a lot more and allows the upper level winds to move towards uh, um, from a westerly direction which definitely um, which definitely it not only enhances the stable air since so much air is sinking in this region but enhances the wind shear since the upper level winds are going the opposite direction of the surface trade winds which is why typically during El Nino we see less storms less hurricanes and less major hurricanes develop in the Atlantic but that isn't the only factor that will determine how many storms we will see in the hurricane season because again we need to take a look at several different factors before we can automatically assume this hurricane season will be below average when it comes to the amount of storms. Another factor we need to take a look at is the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation and what this oscillation typically uh, typically means is that during a positive Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation we see the sea surf temperatures a lot warmer than average over a 20 to 30 year period. We do see that we've been in a positive Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation for quite some time since right around the mid 90s. So for around 25 to nearly 30 years now we've been seeing um, sea surf temperatures much warmer than average in the Atlantic, which is the reason why, compared to the long term average when it comes to the amount of storms and hurricanes developing, we've been seeing much more active than usual hurricane seasons, at least relative to the long term average. However, when we take a look at the short term average, definitely there's a lot less of, of a chance that the hurricane season would be above average since we, uh, since the short term average only encompasses a 30 year period, and of course, the the positive Atlantic multi decadal oscillation been going on for a, nearly a 30 year period at this point. So it so unless you've experienced years prior to let's say 1995, you won't really notice a positive Atlantic multi decadal oscillation as bringing more storms than usual since pretty much your entire lives it's been in a positive multi Atlantic multi decadal, decadal oscillation. But when comparing this hurricane season to the long term average, we're more likely to experience a more active than usual hurricane season pretty much um, based on entirely on the fact that this season is expected to be a positive Atlantic multi decadal oscillation just like the years we've been seeing over the past 25 to 30 years so that's only something to be aware of when comparing um, this season to long term average however comparing it to a short term average it's less likely to be that much above average and potentially below average um, thanks to an uh, El Nino that's expected to build. 
We clearly see the differences in C receptors comparing the pos um, comparing the positive Atlantic multidectal oscillation C receptors to the average um, negative Atlantic multidectal oscillation C receptors, where we do see that during a positive phase, the C receptors on average are much above average, while during a negative phase, the C receptors are much below average. So, of course, since we're in a positive Atlantic multidectal oscillation, we're more likely to see a uh, more active than usual hurricane season at least compared to the long-term average we clearly see the effect of the positive atlantic multidectal oscillation taking place here where most of the atlantic at this time is experiencing sea receptors above average and based on climatology computer models forecasts the above average sea receptors should continue for the duration of the hurricane season which will which could potentially even out the effects that an el nino pattern would bring to the atlantic hurricane season where we could potentially see the warmer than average sea surf temperatures bring a little bit more tropical cyclones than you typically see in a typical el nino thanks to above average sea surf temperatures so this hurricane season could fall more closer to average um, than what um, compared to um, other El Nino years where it's simply below average. So that's something, definitely something we're going to need to keep in mind as well as we approach the hurricane season. Take a look at the CFS computer model forecast over the next several months when it comes to sea surf temperatures. We do see that warmer than average sea surf temperatures are expected to persist into the hurricane season. And in fact, the CFS model expects the sea surf temperatures to become even warmer than they are right now, at least when it comes to departure from average, especially in the northern Atlantic, which has been a common tre trend we've been seeing over the past several hurricane seasons we see in June, July, August, these warmer than average sea surf temperatures are expected to persist all hurricane season long, which makes it more likely that the hurricane season will fall at least closer to average than below average, even though there's an El Nino and even into September, the most active month of the hurricane season, we see those sea surf temperatures persist um, in the warmer than average range, which will certainly raise certainty that the, we're going to see more storms and hurricanes compared to what we typically see during an El Nino, which will make this hurricane season be a little bit closer to average um, than you typically expect. If we were to take a look at the wind shear anomaly as well, right around the, the um, layer of the atmosphere where the millibar pressure is centered right around 200 millibars, which is the which is considered the upper level of the atmosphere, we do see that the wind shear is also expected to be lighter than average, despite the fact that we're going to be in an El Nino phase. It will be um, above average right around the Southern Caribbean, but we do see that the Central Atlantic will be um, will um, could potentially see, experience wind shear that's below average. We still need to take it with a grain of salt because again, this is still a long-term forecast. A lot could change between now and August and September, but it's only another thing that we're at least going to take into consideration when making this hurricane season forecast because the CFS model um, isn't just guessing when it comes to when it comes to a pattern like this it's taking a look at historical data and um that and comparing and comparing on um, the conditions we're seeing right now to the the historical data that the cfs model was um taking a look at back then it's it's stating that we're more likely going to see the wind shear a little bit below average for this hurricane season so that's only something to keep in mind of course there's whole holes in the historical data because of course we've only we haven't been keeping track of weight weather data for that long um relative to how of course how long um we've been experiencing hurricane season um seasons but for the most part the cfs model is showing that the atlantic will experience below average wind shear so we need to take this into consideration as well and that could enhance the possibility of a more active than usual hurricane season Taking a look at the CFS's models forecast when it comes to precipitation, and what's interesting is that just off the Saharan desert coast, we do see that the CFS model is expecting a little bit more moisture than usual this hurricane season, which could 
definitely enhance risk of of tropical storms and hurricanes developing we see a lot of moisture come off the saharan desert um the western african coast uh, right around the july to june time frame and even into september however we do see more stable than average conditions right around the caribbean as well as the southern gulf of mexico which is expected considering that it's so close to the equate the eastern equatorial pacific so it will feel more of the effects of that convert of that divergence going on in that stability that would occur right around the caribbean associated with an el nino but we do see that uh the enhanced risk of um, more moisture moving just off the west african coast um, could enhance the possibility as well that this hurricane season will fall closer to average this um, um than below average even though we're in an el nino phase another thing i want to point out is compare is that we need to compare this year to prior years that are very similar to the type conditions we're going to experience this year and the two years that really stand out to me as um the years that are expected to be the most similar to this year are the, are the is the hurricane season of 1957 as well as the hurricane season of 1976 because both of those hurricane seasons came off of three consecutive years where uh, they uh, where um, they experienced uh, La Nina phase during the hurricane season, which is of course the same scenario we're in right now. Because in 2020, in 2020, 2021, and 2022, those three hurricane seasons we experienced a La Nina phase, and now we're approaching an El Nino phase, which is exactly what happened during the hurricane season of 1957 and 1976. So it's good to take a look at those two years because they're 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 conditions are very similar to what we're going to experience this year so when we take a look at those two hurricane seasons we see um two very interesting patterns so these are all the tropical cyclones that developed during the 1957 hurricane season and this hurricane season was considered below average where we only saw 10 storms and we only really saw one hurricane make landfall along the United States and, and, and in fact only one hurricane in general made landfall it, um, throughout the entirety of the Atlantic we did see one major hurricane right around um, the cent right around the main development region um, but outside of that it was a fairly quiet hurricane season however um, I want to point out that even though this hurricane season was quite than average we also need to keep in mind that the 1957 season was during a negative um, mo Atlantic multi dectal oscillation which definitely would suppress um, tropical cyclone activity because the sea surface temperatures are cooler than average during a negative Atlantic multi dectal oscillation. We aren't going to be in that scenario for 2023, so I do expect the hurricane season to at least be more active than what we see right here. But the 1957 indicates that um, in a year where we're going to experience an El Nino coming off of three consecutive La Nina years, it's simply um, below average when it comes to the amount of tropical cyclones that develop. So this is only something to keep in mind when making this forecast for this hurricane season. Taking a look at the 1976 hurricane season, we do see quite a different scenario where 21 storms form. I mean, not storms, but um, 21 tropical depressions formed, but however, only 10 of those became actual storms, which is, again, considered a below average hurricane season. But again, I need to point out that the 1976 hurricane season um, occurred when the Atlantic multi dectal oscillation was in its negative phase. So you should expect more tropical cyclones than what you see with the 1957 and 1976 hurricane season but typically those two years indicate that coming off of three um, consecutive la nina years and entering an el nino year we typically do see below a uh, below average amount of storms hurricanes and major hurricanes that develop but since we're going to be in a positive atlantic multi-dectal oscillation it should be a little bit more than what you see right here so definitely keep that in mind so here's my hurricane season forecast for 2023 so i'm gonna compare it to the new um short-term average which is between 1991 and 2020 because it's a better indicator of what most of you guys of the years 
uh, the hurricane seasons that most of you guys have experienced because of course not a lot of people have experienced hurricane seasons prior to 1990 to really experience what it's like during a negative north at um atlantic multi-decadal oscillation so comparing it to the short term average i'm expecting an average amount of storms um 14 named storms it will certainly be less than what i, I forecast for 2022 2021 and 2020 thanks to the fact that we're going to be in an el nino pattern which typically does bring more stability and wind shear however i do think that the warmer than average sea surface temperatures and the potential for a little bit more moisture coming off the west african coast will sort of balance it out to a point where we're going to see mainly an average amount of storms i'm expecting one more hurricane than the short term average and this and the reason why is because sea surface temperatures will be warmer than average so even though that there's an el nino the fact that the sea surface temperatures are warmer than average in the atlantic does raise the potential that any storm that does develop during an el nino year during when the war uh, sea surface temperatures are warmer than average will likely have a higher potential of becoming a more significant storm um, such as a hurricane or potentially a major hurricane where i'm expecting slight a uh, slightly above average amount of hurricanes and uh, major hurricanes but mainly around average for the most part so for this hurricane season i'm expecting um this um an average amount of storms mainly an average amount of hurricanes and major hurricanes but this is certainly subject to change and remember all it takes is one storm to completely devastate a community and change people's lives so don't underestimate the hurricane season if it falls below your expectations or it isn't at necessarily as active as a years prior because of remember all it takes is one major storm to cause devastating impacts and we could easily see that even during an el nino or below average hurricane season so keep that in mind when um when preparing for this hurricane season so this is my forecast on where the um where um the tropical cyclones will develop this hurricane season so i'm expecting average cyclone formation right in between the main development region and right around the western atlantic i expect more storms to move towards the western atlantic this year because the wind shear should be a little bit stronger so the westerly winds will be a little bit stronger and it will steer storms a little bit further eastward so the areas that could get impacted the most um could be um florida as well as the carolinas and i expect a little bit less tropical cyclones to move westward into the western gulf of mexico because of the stronger wind shear which should steer storms a little bit further eastward i'm gonna make a more in detail forecast regarding the exact track of where storms will go this hurricane season in a in a couple of days potentially so keep in mind of that that, but I expect the most tropical cyclones to develop um, somewhere a little bit further eastward thanks to the fact that the wind shear will be a little bit stronger so keep that in mind this hurricane season but yeah guys um stay tuned for more hurricane season videos in the future I'm gonna continuously make more hurricanes uh, long-term hurricane season outlooks so keep um stay tuned for that and I uh, thank you guys for watching and make sure to subscribe if you want to see more um hurricane season content like this and other weather related content as well